Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. So this video is going to look at transportation processes that occur along the coastline. And as always, check out the description box below for the link to worksheets that you can complete while watching these videos to help you with your home learning or your revision if you want to make a nice set of summary notes. So I'm going to, to use the word sediment a lot in this video and when I am using this word sediment I need you to be thinking about this idea of it being a solid material that is moved and deposited dropped off in a new location and within our coastline we can have different sized sediments so we can have sand so very fine in terms of its sediment size we can have shingle very small rocks or we can have larger loads like pebbles. So when I am referring to the sediment, I'm talking about the material that is moved and dropped off in a new location within our coastline. Now, this video is all about the process of transportation and transportation when we are thinking about the coasts and coastlines is thinking about the movement of material in the sea, but also along the coast due to waves moving the sediment from one location to another. So we're going to start off by looking at the movement of material along the coastline on the shore line where the land meets the sea. And we call this process longshore drift. Now, if you're working on the worksheets, okay, or even if you're not working on the worksheets, if you are a GCSE geography student, you will need to be able to understand the process of longshore drift as well as be able to draw a diagram. So, I would really highly recommend if you are creating summary notes while you're watching these videos that you need to complete a diagram to show the process of longshore drift as I am explaining it. So when it comes to the process of longshore drift, we start with a prevailing wind direction. So your prevailing wind direction is your strongest, most dominant wind direction that is approaching your coastline. This prevailing wind will encourage the waves to wash up onto the coastline, onto the beach, through the process known as swash. So when the waves approach the beach at an angle, we call this swash. It may potentially pick up sediment along the way and move it onto the coastline before that wave then retreats and washes back at a 90 degree angle into the sea, which we call back wash. And it potentially might take the sediment with it. Now, over time, this process is repeated through the process of swash and backwash, swash and backwash. And over time, you will be able to see the direction of longshore drift, the movement of sediment from one location on the coastline all the way down the beach to another new location. And that is our overall direction of longshore drift that we can see. Now, when it comes to human activity on the coastline, we as humans sometimes want to prevent and stop longshore drift from taking place. So we decide to build groins. And groins are large structures that stick out into the sea at a 90 degree angle, just like the picture you can see on the screen. Now, this is an example of a rock groin. And rock groins are typically more expensive than these particular groins, which are wooden fenced groins. Again, they stick out into the sea at a 90 degree angle. If we do introduce and build groins onto the coastline, we as humans are trying to stop longshore drift from taking place. We are trying to prevent the movement of sediment along the coastline. This may be because we want to build up a nice beach. It might be because we want to increase the sediment on the coastline to reduce erosion taking place. So if we then apply the building of a groin on our coastline to the diagram of longshore drift, again, we've got that prevailing wind direction, that strong, most dominant wind direction, washing the waves onto the beach at an angle known as swash. These waves might pick up sediment, transport it onto the beach, onto the coastline, before the wave retreats at a 90 degree angle back into the sea through the process of backwash. Over time, this process is repeated through swash and backwash, swash and backwash. So we do have a direction of longshore drift taking place. However, in this diagram now, we have a groin that has been built on our coastline. 
And this groin's purpose is to trap and stop that sediment moving any further down the coastline. And as you can see on the diagram now, we have a nice collection of sediment, sand, pebbles, maybe some shingle, collecting next to that groin. However, what we need to be mindful of as geographers is that groins do have an impact on the other side of the beach as well. So we have not prevented longshore drift from happening on the other side of the groin. Longshore drift is still taking place due to the prevailing wind washing the waves up onto the coastline at an angle known as swash. So because the other side of the groin still has longshore drift taking place, we will begin to then see erosion over a period of time because the sediment is still being removed on the other side of the groin. So even though the sediment is building up on one side of the groin, it is actually still being transported on the other side. And over time, what will happen is on one side of the groin, like you can see on the screen, you will have this lovely beach that has been built up because that groin is doing its job, is preventing sediment from being moved any further down the coastline. But look at the screen and look at where the arrow is pointing. We then have got a beach on the other side of the groin that has completely disappeared. We call this erosion. So because of longshore drift still taking place on the other side of the groin, the sediment on that side has been moved further down the coastline, which has created erosion. OK, because the sediment that is being trapped by the groin cannot move any further past that groin to replace the sediment that's lost on the other side. So groins are great when it comes to trapping sediment, but they can affect locations further down the coastline because you are decreasing the amount of sediment that's being replaced due to preventing the natural process of longshore drift from taking place. And that then leads to erosion. So that summarises the process of longshore drift. Now, although longshore drift is the main process of transportation on coastlines, there are also four other ways material is moved along the coastline as well. So. We first of all have traction. Now traction is when we have large particles like boulders and they are pushed along the seabed, this time within the actual seawater by the force of the water. These particles, this sediment is extremely heavy. So the waves do not have enough energy to pick them up from the seabed. And this is why they're constantly pushed along. On the other hand, we have a transportation process known as saltation, and this involves pebbles, so smaller particles. These pebbles, because they are lighter than our boulders, bounce along the seabed from time to time due to the force of the water. When the sea has enough energy, it will pick that pebble up from the seabed, it will suspend it in the water before dropping it back down when it loses its energy. And that is all to do with the actual weight of the sediment. We then have got suspension, which involves really fine, small particles like silt and clay being carried along in the water because they're extremely light. So therefore, they won't sit on the seabed. So within your coastline, in your sea and your body of water, you will have material suspended, floating within the water and it's moved from place to place. And then finally, we also have solution and solution involves soluble material which has been dissolved in the water. So we cannot see any sediment, we cannot see any particles because they have been dissolved into that water. And again, because the sea is constantly moving due to waves and prevailing wind and friction being caused, we will have that soluble material being moved within our waves and transported within our coastline. So as always, everyone, thank you so much for watching. I'm hoping you're finding these videos useful. Like and subscribe if you are. And I'll see you next time.